Good evening. This is your host, Ben Moyer, and you're listening to 104.5 The Link. As always, I've got Mike Miller in the booth with me. Once again, we'll be diving deep into the world of creators, influencers, and the tribes they lead. Thanks for joining us on air. Yeah, excited for it. Episode one. Oh, yeah. Um, so our producer's got a segment for us, Mike. You want to know what it is? What, what, what's he got? What, what, what's going down? Guess the acronyms, because I know you love acronyms oh so much. <laughs> For episode one, dude, guess the acronyms. Yeah. Oh, boy, here we go. You want to put a wager? Is it like, no, I don't want to put a wager. I'll no. lose, dude. I, you know what? There's like 15. <laughs> it's going to start off pretty easy. I don't know. Like, a, dude, cheap bet. We'll do a cheap bet. What do you want? Uh, a beer. How about that? We'll wager a beer. A beer. All right. It's fair. <laughs> okay, so we got like 15. If you get more than half, we'll call that a win for you. Okay. Okay. So you got to get eight. Yeah, these, get are eight all, these are all sales and marketing related as well. Because oh, God. if you want to talk about bullshit acronyms, you go <laughs> to sales and marketing. <laughs> All, All right, right. You're, what, you're what do we got? Yeah, ready? Ready? Me with them. Yep. All right, we're starting off easy. They get more, more abstract as we go. Nice and easy. CRM. Uh, content relation manager. That's close? not bad. That's not bad. It's not. I'm not gonna count Cus- it. Customer relation okay. manager. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll Customer, count it. We'll right? count it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. give, me, give me a little leeway there. Though. Can okay. you name a CRM? I'll give you a bonus point if you can name a CRM. Uh, HubSpot? Good. All right, cool. Right? Well, all right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you two. We'll give you two there. All right, yeah. MQL. N? M. MQL, like your name. M- like. Marketing Qualified Lead. Nice. All right, we're two for two. Two for two. Yeah. KPI. Uh, key Performance. Indicator. See? All right. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah. We're Some of these along. we use in, in engineering and stuff. So, like, yeah, I'm a little, uh, you know, that one we use in engineering. All right. We got ROI. Return. That's it. Nice. All right. Yeah. See? Getting four close four. to that beer in here. Getting pretty close to that beer. Should have made it like 10. SEO. <laughs> uh, Search engine optimization. Okay. Nice. CTA. Uh, CTA is the call to action. I feel like you're Googling these. I'm no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm and not. I set two. I low use that when I what because when I, I design REO things, I use that one. Yeah, <laughs> really? You want me to beer? All right, give me the give me the ones that just like make me want to like go crazy. All right, CPC, <laughs> CPC. I don't want to say like customer product something. I don't know. I have no idea what that one is. Cost per click. Cost per click. For there we go. Running Google ads. ads. And stuff. Yeah, 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 I should. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't run enough ads. All right. CPM. Well, uh, well, now I'm in like the cost per cost per. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have we have an acronym for the cost per producing a movie in sales and marketing, and it's so it's so normal for that to happen that we made an acronym for it. No, it is cost per thousand impressions. Do you know why it's an M and not a T? No, no, because why? M is the Roman numeral for a thousand. Really, but yeah. not and not. Well, what X is ten? So mm-hmm. what, why not K? I don't know. I didn't make this up. This is old school <laughs> marketing. All right, CLM. This is my personal CLM. favorite one. I threw this in here. Oh well, then you're gonna love me butchering this one. Creative language model. Nope. 
career limiting move. Ah, okay. So that's when you go to LinkedIn and you say, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be saying it. <laughs> this is when you hit on the boss's wife at the company party. Yeah. <laughs> that kind career of thing. Delivery. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's roll through these. We've got uh, Bant or B A N T. Uh, well, wasn't there a cryptocurrency that was B A T, basic attention token? So, uh, no, 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 no. no. no okay. not, so, this is, uh, not- <laughs> this is qualifying for sale. So, it's budget, authority, need, and timeline. And it's like uh, it's a framework that people use to qualify deals. Oh. All right. We've got like four left here. Oh. CLV or LTV? Uh, my internet was a little, little, uh, janky there. C- CLB, uh, so, uh, customer lifetime value in that yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. I've heard some of these. Yeah. Nice. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, CAC, CAC. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I think it's like customer acquisition costs or something. Dude, is you're that... crushing it. You're crushing it. I expected really? you to just be like, absolutely like flustered by these but you're nailing it uh cms content management system yeah why do you know that that's like i feel like you should not know that <laughs> well we're just contentful before which uh, is a cms okay. yeah, yeah 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 all right all right fair enough yeah. uh nps is your last one n n or m n like uh n. native point of sale Nah, net promoter score. It's oh. how uh, people measure how much your like users like your product, basically. Okay. I should right, know I that. Mean, <laughs> you crushed it. You got like, I want to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 15. I, geez, crushed it. Yeah. Plus your extra point, 10. I'm going to ask bad. you for an old fashioned instead of a beer. That's fair. We'll <laughs> let you upgrade it. We'll let you upgrade it. Um, very nice. All right. Well, as always, guys, we're going to take to the phones today. And uh, we want to hear from anybody out there riding the waves of social media, making the content that we all love. Uh, in the meantime, let's put on some music. It's going to be Bewitched by Zorro. Uh, Mike, can we open up those phones? Yeah, we're looking at it right now. Oh, Ben, uh, we got a we got a call on line two here. Can you get that? Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, fade this music out. Hey, welcome to 104.5 The Link Caller. You're talking to Ben Moyer, and I've got Mike Miller, as always, in the studio. What's going on with you tonight, man? Hey, hey, how's it going? Brendan Short here. How we doing? We're doing good. Oh, hey, Brendan. I've seen you uh, around LinkedIn, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, yeah, as always, we you know we talk to creators and influencers on our show, and we just love to hear you know what you're doing, who you're talking to, what your audience is, and uh, all the crazy stories along that journey as well. And so, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of you know where you make content, who you're talking to, what your audience is, to start us off, and we'll kind of you know love to dive into some pieces there. Sounds good. Thanks for taking the call, Ben. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, mostly focused on LinkedIn uh, in terms of content that I'm creating. Uh, I started a software company a couple of years ago. I'm the co-founder and CEO. Um, we do not have anyone doing marketing full time, so that's also part of my role. Uh, and so uh, we can talk a little bit about that, but that's definitely a big focus and a reason for me to be posting on LinkedIn, um, among other things. Um, but that's the main channel. I've I've done a little bit like creating content on Substack, on a blog, done a little, little bit uh, around Twitter. Um, and that's that's about it, though. Cool. Who Who's, like, following you? Like, what does your audience kind of look like? Yeah, so we, my, my company focuses on 
product-led growth companies uh, in the B2B space, business-to-business companies, so mostly SaaS companies. Um, and yeah, we so, so most of the content that I'm writing is for that audience. So it's for go-to market folks um, in the B2B space. Um, and, you know, it's sales leaders, executives, rev ops, marketing, kind of across the gamut but mostly focused on go-to market folks at B2B software companies. Nice. Nice. How long have you been doing it for? Um, I've been kind of, we started the company, I started the company about two years ago, but um, I, uh, yeah, I guess I've been posting on LinkedIn for maybe five years or so. Um, I guess the, the, my, this is my second company. So the first company that I started, um, I also was posting on LinkedIn as a way to, to generate leads uh, for the business and just kind of build brand awareness. Um, so comes and goes in waves, I would say in terms of my content creation. Um, but yeah, on and off for yeah, five, six years, something like that. So, so you're posting on LinkedIn is like a natural distribution method for your startup, right? Can you talk a little bit about like what the startup is so that we can kind of like bridge together like why LinkedIn makes a lot of sense and how that audience and distribution works well? Yeah, totally. So we sell to uh, B2B companies that have a product-led growth motion, meaning you can sign up for the product and start using the product um, without talking to a salesperson. Uh, And then we also, we help actually go to market teams, understand who's signing up, who's using your product, what they're doing in the product, what size company are they at, how many people at one company have signed up, et cetera. So basically for salespeople and marketers to be able to prioritize and focus on, you know, the right, the, the kind of highest dollar potential signups that are signing up within your user base. So basically taking internal customer data, marrying that with third party data, overlaying kind of firmographic technograph, technographic data to make sure it's a good fit. And then um, sending that over to the sales team. So the reason I think that, that, um, content has done well for us as a channel, uh, is because this motion that's like called product led sales, it's basically when there's a bottom up and a top down motion at a company. And this is a fairly new category in the last couple of years. Um, so I think on LinkedIn in particular, I focus a lot on educational content. So just talking about product led sales in general for startups, but then also at scale businesses. And I find that, you know, a lot of people will come to me that just want to talk about, you know, how to set up product led sales aside from groundswell. And then hopefully the idea for me selfishly, of course, is when they're ready to actually operationalize that and scale that motion, they're going to think of me and they're going to think of groundswell and have a conversation with me. Yeah. So that's really interesting because, you know, part of it is definitely like a lead gen model for groundswell. Right. But I was going to, I was going to follow up kind of, how do you, kind of envision your relationship with your audience, it sounds a lot like maybe a teacher kind of student relationship, right? Like a lot of educational content. Like how do you think about, you've got 18,000 followers, I think on LinkedIn or something like that. What is that? What is that in YouTube terms? Does anybody know what that is in YouTube terms? Like we translate that over to YouTube. It's such like the numbers are so much smaller, but the reach is so insane on LinkedIn that like I would love to do the math sometime of like, what is that equivalent of of subscribers on YouTube? We should do that sometime. Um, But yeah, so the question was like, you know, how do you think about those 18,000 people following you? You're talking about educational content. Like, is that really, is that the main kind of dichotomy, like the relationship that you view there? Yeah. I mean, I'd say the, I want to educate. I also want to learn. Um, so I think one of this is, this is see, like, I feel like this is an underrated thing about probably any social media, but certainly LinkedIn, at least for me in the B2B world is like, I actually, put out content and I learn a lot. So I learn about a a bunch of different things. So, um, it's basically just like a a flywheel, right? So I can post and people will, you know, I'll post something and and they'll disagree and tell me why I'm wrong and I get to learn and I can, you know, decide to agree with them or disagree, but I get to hear the other side of it. Right. Um, I can ask questions and get really quick feedback, um, from the audience. Um, obviously like I can share if we have a launch coming up or, um, you know, when we, when we, um, you know, add a new product line, I can talk about that when we're hiring somebody, I can talk about that. 
Um, and then, yeah, I think the education piece is also interesting. Brand awareness. Like I talked to a lot of people that, um, you know, think that we're bigger than we are. You know, we're, a, to me and my co-founder, we have a couple of contract engineers right now. Um, so I think just like a brand awareness perspective, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, I think off the top of my head, those are like kind of the, the reasons that I think about posting. Um, and yeah, I mean, we could, we could talk a little bit about like, I think the negatives, like the cringe factor oh, or the things that are like <laughs> not so glamorous about posting. I was about regularly. to ask, yeah. like, what is the most controversial post? You, you talk about people disagree. Like, I want to know the thing mm. that you just got absolutely roasted for. for Cause like, I think about that all the time. I'm also on LinkedIn and I'm like, what is yeah. the one thing that I post where I'm going to find out that I was the idiot in the room, right? Where I was like, <laughs> oh shit. Like that should never have been like a thing. I did. <laughs> um, uh, Brendan's never had this. I mean, he's just a, he's an expert <laughs> in everything that he posts. He's never had this problem. Perfect results. No, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to think of, I can't think of like any specific example where I like stated something that was a fact and people were like, no, this is why you're wrong. Um, I, you know, maybe it's my personality, but like, I, I won't say something if I don't think it's true. Um, if I don't think it's true, then like, I'll probably more just pose it as like, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. Is this right? You know, it's like um, outbound is dead is like the stupid catchy line or like the the uh, clickbait line um, where like sometimes I'll find myself saying that uh, or referencing something in that space. And like, you know, you'll get the people that are like, oh, it's alive and well. Like I booked three meetings this morning off of cold outbound. I'm like, OK, cool. Um, that was not the point of the post, but I get it. Uh, so it's, that, that's maybe one example. I mean, I'd say the other more common one is um, when I put up a post and like it just kind of flops. It doesn't resonate with the audience. Um, I think that's also that's a signal to me. Like, uh, and the flip side happens as well. Like, I'll put up a post that's like last minute. I just throw something together and it does really well in terms of engagement and and people message me because of it. Um, and I still to this day, and I think like you know. Dave Gerhardt uh, has said this many times. I've heard him say, like, you never really know how a post is going to perform. And so you just need to do a lot of volume. So, uh, you know, I think that's, I definitely resonate with that where, you know, I'll put up 10 posts and like, I basically have still after posting, I don't know how many times, hundreds of posts, like I still don't know what's going to do well and what's not going to do well. But I think that's the point is like that, that's like, that's what I want to learn is like, does this message resi resonate um, with people or not? Um, and so, yeah, it's less about like me saying something and people are like, you're wrong. And more about like, just falls flat. Or maybe I'll get some feedback on, you know, X, Y, or Z. Um, and sometimes I'll change my opinion. Sometimes I will learn like somebody else's perspective and I still believe what I initially said. Yeah, I'm going to need you to get some more like emotionally charged posts going. So I expect in the next yeah. like, couple of <laughs> weeks, I want to see something that just gets people pissed off. <laughs> <I'm Brendan Schwartz. laughs> well, I, I will say that the controversial posts definitely they do quite well on LinkedIn. So I try to think about like what is controversial. I don't want to say just like platitudes and things that are like obviously true. Um, I, I think it's yeah, if, if you think about like trying to get reach, um, yeah, controversial things do play well. So do you think that I'm, the, I'm all for it. do you think the controversial posts are positive in the long term or negative in the long term? Like posting something that gets people to disagree or gets them angry, do you think that that hurts your reputation over time? Or yeah, totally. I think I think anything that's kind of pandering to the algorithm hurts you long term. I think it can help you in the short term, but I don't think long term it's super helpful. So I, I would put that in that category of just like controversial things. Um, and, and there's a bunch of similar type things where you're pandering to the algorithm, trying to play into like, um, you know, whatever the current thing is with yeah, the algorithm. latest trend or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I, I do think it's like, yeah, sure. You might have more engagements on that post than you typically do. Um, but yeah, I think long, if, if that's all you're doing, like people are going to get tired of that. Um, that's like not a fun person to, to follow in my yeah. opinion. I want to, I want to go back a couple of questions. Cause we, you, you were mentioned like, Hey, we could like dive into the cringe part. Like what posting every day looks like. Like, what were you, what were you thinking of when you were going down that path? 
<laughs> yeah. So a couple of thoughts there. So number one, I think for, for people that are maybe trying to see if they like posting content, if it's interesting for them personally, if it's interesting for their business, um, I think there's a fear that like, I'm going to put out bad content. And so I'm not going to post, or I'm going to spend two or three or four days writing the perfect piece of content. Um, again, you just need to post a lot of content. You don't need to overthink it. In my opinion, like just post, like try to just post every day. Um, I think the, the upside is if you post bad content, people aren't going to like it. They're not going to comment on it. They're not going to reshare it. No one's going to see it. So you can, you know, have peace of mind that like in the early days, your content might be bad, but who cares? Because frankly, nobody's going to see it anyway. Um, I think even when you do have success or even when you do, um, you know, start to have traction, um, you know, it's still like kind of funny and cr to me, it's like a little bit cringy. Like I just kind of laughed at like, uh, like the, you know, influencer or, or like LinkedIn influencer is like kind of silly to me. Um, I, no dude, offense to anybody out there. No, that LinkedIn influencer resonates with that. is the greatest. <laughs> it's the greatest because it is just the weirdest thing because it's people trying so hard. There's like six things that work in business, right? Especially in like the SaaS category. It's people trying so hard to take those six things and turn them into 365 days of content. And so you just get the most <laughs> wild, like, like over explained nonsense where you're like, if you just worked 50% harder, you'd probably get better results. Like that's, that's what you get. Doing <laughs> Dude, LinkedIn influencers are fantastic. <laughs> so no offense yeah. to you, obviously in the space, but, um, yeah. Dude, so one thing I, and you can like change names or maybe this hasn't happened to you, but like, have you met anybody through this that you never expected to meet or like a cool story of like, oh, now we're like really close and like talk a lot or something along those lines? Totally. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's probably top three reasons that I think it's interesting to post is like who you meet. Um, uh, many, many, many examples of this. Um, I mean, my wife will ask me like, where, where did you meet this person that I, you know, I'll, I'll talk on the phone for an hour and I'll say, you know, it's my friend Kyle. And she's like, what part of the internet did you meet him on? <laughs> um, <laughs> is what she asked me one time. And I, uh, you know, it's like on LinkedIn or like, you know, in a discord server for like crypto or NFT is like, there's, you know, I hang out in, in weird parts of the internet and like you meet real people. I um, got to know so, why you're in Discord servers for crypto yeah. and NFT. We need we need the deets here. We can talk about it, man. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Now is the time to be buying. It's it's uh, bear market buys right now. Um, very quiet. It crypto's is very been very quiet. quiet recently. It yeah. has. It has. There's interesting things happening, though. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I think there's people that I meet, um, you know, obviously customers um, and, and prospects, like, most of our inbound deals come inbound because of my LinkedIn posts. Um, and these are like large, fast growing, you know, ra you know, unicorn companies or public companies, like very big companies, um, and executives are, are coming inbound, um, just because of my LinkedIn posts. Um, there's also people that I've met that are like, I would say are like friends now that are like in the industry. They're also like, I initially talked to them about sales or about go to market or about whatever. Um, and then eventually it was like, Oh, we like enjoy things outside of just kind of the work context and know each other that way. Um, Guys are trading I don't think that's like necessarily my goal. What's that? Trade NFTs under the table. It's like, exactly. Uh, <laughs> there's a very probably low Venn diagram of overlap between like LinkedIn, B2B SaaS and like, you know, NFT world. But yeah, maybe, maybe the eight of us will get together one day and have a drink. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, I want, did I you know try, uh, oops, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt there, but did you try uh friend tech, Brendan? Have you been on that yet? I, I, I have not yet. Um, yeah. I'm, I have not yet. Have you? Are you? You uh, know that that's not, like only popped up in the last week. So that's yeah, it's a pretty new thing. Uh, yeah. it, uh, I'm trying to get my invite, but uh, it basically looks like, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you can buy shares of people, right? So right. along the lines of that. Uh, yeah. Where, how do you think this ends up playing out as time goes on? I'm dying because I'm like, 
we they need a better if that's the actual catchphrase they need to move away from slavery and like <laughs> rebrand that somehow. Yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> yeah, I think they re, re they renamed it today from like yeah to keys or something from from tokens to keys. I think anyway shares yeah. to keys. <laughs> um, so it's yeah. not a security. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean I think that's there are some other companies. I'm forgetting what the name of it is now, but you could buy shares in like people or influencers so like, like royal was something close or something like that i think yeah uh, i thought you could own like part of an artist's music or something like that yeah that's the guy that did open door what's his name jd ross maybe um anyway uh yeah i mean i think that's like not i don't know i don't have a strong opinion on that to be honest i think that like it's interesting to think about people early in their creator career i think about that and like how do how do i capture the upside of that but i think when you when you introduce like dynamics where you're literally trading um off of somebody's reputation it just i don't know i don't i don't think that ends that well um you know if they say something and they're gonna get canceled and people are shorting their stock like, yeah. <laughs> that probably doesn't feel great as an individual but it's a free market i guess it could exist um yeah I don't know. it's like day trading attention like people's right. attention or something just imagine the mental health impacts like it's already horrible for creators right and then like to put basically a stock behind it and like a market behind it that's and like, which is also horrible for people's mental health, <laughs> right? Like, I just, that yeah. does not sound like a good long-term, like, societal play in general. That's terrifying. Yeah, um, yeah I don't think so. All right, I want, I want the one, okay, so, like, this is the disclaimer, right? Which is, this is not market advice. We're not financial advisors, but I want the one tip from Brendan right now. He's like, this is what, this is what I'm seeing. I want the one Brendan Shore tip on his NFT and crypto space. <laughs> not financial advice well the 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 midwit meme here is like on the left side and the right side is just buy ethereum and buy bitcoin and just don't touch it for five years um that's that's the simple play uh i mean i'm mostly like curious about the technology and i've like tinkered with some like DAOs, which i think are it's pretty interesting um I think that there's there's super cool experiments going on in that space. I also think that like generative art is super interesting. Um, and there's like, you know, this is only possible with the blockchain technology. Um, so I've gotten more into like art and like looking at kind of modern art, NFTs, digital objects, um, which I think are pretty interesting. And I think the early ones will be potentially like good stores of value. Um, so places like art blocks, um, are super interesting. They're like minting, you know, they're very good artists. there, um, creating, uh, what I think is dope art. Um, I'm less into like the profile picture stuff, um, and communities around that. I'm pretty bearish on those. And those are all pretty much tanking at this point. Although I do think crypto punks are, are going to be uh, here to stay, so I would I would uh, definitely buy a, a punk right now if that's I had why, the liquidity. That's just because Gary. Why do you think those ones are going to stay? <laughs> what did you say, Ben? I said that's just because Gary V pushed them. That's the only reason <laughs> they're going to stick around. That's, right. that's a negative in my mind, to be quite <laughs> honest. No offense, Gary, if you're listening to this, love you, bro. Uh, yeah, why do you think the crypto punks will stay and the others are going to kind of fade? Well, they're the first, so they're the first one to actually do a, a 10,000 PFP project. Um, so I think that's very interesting. They kind of created the ERC 20 token, um, which is kind of the now, um, you know, it's the go-to uh, way that company or that projects mint. Um, so I think that there's like kind of a first element to it, which I think is important. Um, and then I also think now they've just kind of become very culturally relevant, especially in crypto. Like I think people outside of crypto are like, why there's like this weird, whatever eight bit thing, like this looks kind of silly. But I think if you're in crypto, you just know, like if, if somebody has a punk, like either they're an OG or they get it. Um, and I think that's just going to continue to happen over time. 
it's also just like kind of a bet on Ethereum. And I think programmable money is probably going to happen. Um, and so I think we're in kind of a classic Gartner hype cycle, like whatever 2020, 2021 was like the hype. And now we're in like, yeah, the, the downslope. And I think it's going to be sad and quiet for another year, probably, if I had to guess, maybe even more. Um, but I think it's going to come back. Awesome. Um, I want to pull this back into creator stuff, uh, but you've got you've got it there, guys. The only NFT crypto tips from Brendan Short, I think, on the internet right now, unless you're in a Discord server with him. So, you know, that's what only, we tune in only here anonymously. For. <laughs> Those are the only ones on the record with my real name. <laughs> Um, but no, pulling back, I actually think this is interesting too. Like, crypto has had, a, in my view, a really bad relationship with social media and like influencers so far. Like, it's just been a lot of like uh, uh, pump and dump schemes, right? Like, a lot mm-hmm. of kind of janky. I'm thinking like Jake Paul and everybody, right? As well as Paul Brothers and <laughs> yeah. everybody. Like, do you think there's a world, like, where do you think it goes where it's healthy, right? Can you imagine a space where it's like a healthy relationship? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is basically with with any large technology shift at the beginning, like most things with that are used in like nefarious ways. So when the internet came out, like a lot of bad people were using the internet for bad things. There are still people that use it for bad things, but I would say it's a net positive overall. Um, I think that's the same with cryptocurrencies where, um, you know, the Silk Road, for instance, was created because you can now pay people anonymously. I think currently and over time, we'll continue to see um, things e- emerge that are like a net positive and same thing with NFT. So yeah, I think, I think digital collectibles make a ton of sense. I think you see it in like Starbucks and rewards, things like that. I, I think there's probably going to be a lot of use cases, even in like B2B. I think the on-ramp is still pretty painful. Like if I try to get somebody to buy an NFT, like a digital piece of art you know for 50 bucks or something there's like very cheap stuff out there um it's like 16 steps to yeah, get exactly, money yeah. exactly and then Oof. you're gonna inevitably get like hacked or scammed um at nine out of ten times so um yeah i think i think there's a lot that needs to be ironed out before it is truly mainstream but um yeah i mean i think the blockchain is like a very powerful thing that is in my opinion, like a, a positive thing for society. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to completely like take away um, the U.S. dollar, for instance, as like the global reserve currency. But I do think that there is. I, I think that the percent of transactions done on Ethereum today will be much larger in ten years, um, or, or maybe some other L two or some other currency. Um, yeah, got a, all right. I got like one last question. We'll let you go, Brennan. Appreciate you taking some time with us. Um, curious actually, cause you mentioned you do a little bit of Twitter. What's like the, what are some differences you've seen, right? You're, you interact with your audience on LinkedIn, you interact with your audience on Twitter. Like, do you see differences in the interactions there? Or is it like the same people just following you on both sides? No. And I, I honestly, I don't really post much on Twitter in like about Groundswell or, or B2B software stuff. Um, I don't think that many people are on Twitter on that side of the house. Um, I think some are, but I haven't, I just haven't really invested that much time into it. I think the thing, the thing that Twitter does well is threads and, um, maybe I would say like more nuanced discussions, actually. I mean, Twitter, you can argue is like kind of chaotic place um but i i don't mind the chaos i think it's okay um i think that they do a good job of giving people the ability to kind of have more back and forth i don't really see that very much in linkedin i think it's like i don't know a a ui ux problem maybe and even reposts until just recently like the last couple of months even if you repost on linkedin like it doesn't give there's no reach to a repost, um, which doesn't make sense if I'm LinkedIn. Like I want people to repost on LinkedIn. Um, so I just now started to like repost more because it seems to actually work. 
Um, like it, it, it's not whatever downgraded by the algorithm or something. So I think that's a very good step in the right direction by LinkedIn. I do think it's pretty different. Um, uh, one of my investors and, and I guess friend is Justin Welsh, um, who started on LinkedIn, built a huge audience on LinkedIn, and then started, I saw him like early days when he went over to, to Twitter. And I remember talking to him and, and him saying like, it's very different. It's much harder. It's not, you can't just copy paste the same content from LinkedIn into Twitter. It's a different kind of culture over there. Um, so I think it's, I think it is pretty different. I haven't really spent much time thinking about or trying to articulate those specific differences, but anyway, I think for, for some advice, if anyone wants the advice, like I think it's okay to just focus on one channel and, and double down and triple down there and not try to be on all of the, the different channels. Like, yeah, there, there's only so much time you can spend on these things as an individual. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think what you hit on the threads and the, the LinkedIn difference there, I have seen that so much where like people actually talk to each other on Twitter. There's a back and forth where like if there's a if there's a popular post on LinkedIn, it's just 50 comments not referencing any other comments on the post. And like half of them are saying <laughs> the same thing. And you're like, yes, this is abysmal. Like this is a horrible experience. I don't care about comments yeah. anymore. It's so weird. Yeah. And then people will respond and like, I don't ever see that response. Like it's, it's a notification thing too, I think, yeah. um, on, on LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. There's no way to like, I don't think comments are like being kind of upvoted in the same way that, that it does on Twitter where like, yeah, if somebody comments something instead of commenting the exact same thing, like you just like it, um, it yeah. doesn't happen as much on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's pretty painful. <laughs> All right. LinkedIn, <laughs> fix your shit. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's her last thing. Um, yeah, so we really appreciate you spending time with us tonight on the air, Brendan. And we're gonna have to say goodbye for now. But any final thought you want to leave the listeners with? Uh, no, come, uh, come connect with me on LinkedIn. Say what's up, and uh, appreciate you taking my call tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we'll see you around. Alrighty, see you guys. See you, man. Yep. The link is brought to you by Holler, because remember, when YouTube changes its monetization rules, you get angry. When you get angry, you throw your computer. When you throw your computer, you start vlogging from your phone. When you vlog from your phone, the videos shake. When the videos shake, viewers unsubscribe. When they unsubscribe, you go into the forest to scream. When you scream in the forest, witches hear you. When witches hear you, they invite you to dance. Don't end up in the forest dancing with witches. Sign up to Holler and take control of your creator journey, the only app that lets you create and run exclusive video sessions with your followers, fans, and subscribers that you can monetize. Visit holler.link and claim your username today. All right, guys. Welcome back. Uh, you're listening to 104.5 The Link. Uh, we're on air here with Ben Moyer and Mike Miller. We just talked to Brendan Short over at Groundswell. Uh, super interesting combo. Did not expect it to go into the NFT space, the crypto space. Uh, yeah. that's always fun. Almost got rug pulled or something. Who knows? <laughs> I feel like that's more up to your alley as well, right? So you, you kind of play in those spaces yeah, was, a bit more. 
Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I see on Twitter a lot the whole friend tech thing. So it's interesting to see that he had seen it. He didn't have his invite yet, but to kind of crack open the idea of where this potentially goes from here. I'm going to be honest. You know, that guy's got horrifying. Like <laughs> you, the way you guys describe friend tech, I'm like, we are in a black mirror episode a hundred percent. Um, like I mentioned, like it, the mental, mental health and creators and influencers is already kind of like, it's a well-documented issue. Right. Um, and then yeah. crypto is also, and like trading is also this other kind of issue. And if you're trading on people's basically fame, and like people are yeah. aware of that, like I, I'm terrified. Oh yeah, it it just it it's it feels like we're make we're gonna make this like day trading world where you can day trade attention. It, it kind of just feels like this is where it's going. Um, we didn't talk so much about that with Brendan, but that's like that seems to be one avenue. The NFT world and that being different types of content and media and being able to own it seems like another avenue. It's, uh, we're, we're turning like everything we can into money. I mean, we always <laughs> have done that, Even right? Like sanity. Money, money rules the world. And like, uh, we've traded on attention forever, right? I mean, that's all advertisements are. The internet that's runs on advertisements. Yeah. Yep. It's just, I feel like making it so naked and so, like upfront about who it is like that that just feels uh, the whole thing always feels icky but now it's like super like oh like oh no please no (laughs) yeah yeah it's going too far how far next the black market you know sell (laughs) nfc for your for your body or whatever the fact the fact that we're pretending that doesn't exist already like you know that's out there like somebody's (laughs) making this shit right (laughs) just like like brendan kind of pointed this out right every new technology the like bad actors kind of get it first. Yeah. Super curious if that just means that they iterate better than everybody else. You know, like are they just like the actual fast adopters so much better than everybody else? But like <laughs> people are making scary shit that we haven't seen yet that's gonna come. Like it's it's out there. Oh yeah. Um oh yeah. The eyeball scanner from Sam Altman or whatever. Did you see that one? No. No. Do I want to <laughs> see this one? Come on. <laughs> Got our listeners. You like scan your eyes and they give you money for it. We're supposed to be we're supposed to be giving a good vibe to our listeners. You know, we're on here late at night. People are <laughs> listening to our music. Got people tuning in to one hundred four five the link, and we're giving them nightmares. Right? This is not the way we want to leave these listeners. Um, man, it'll get better. I promise. Yeah. So, and what, how does it get better? Right. That's the one thing I don't think we got to. Maybe we can leave people with this. Is kind of. Uh, brainstorming or envisioning a world where yeah cryptos well, and had some, are healthy right brendan had some good ideas there like you know getting getting rolling with creating content and you know our podcast is pretty new too one of the interesting things about that whole journey that he said was you know you might be pretty bad at it at the beginning but that's totally fine because if your content isn't that good people just won't see it anyway so, you know, fear of getting things out the door is probably not as big of a deal as you, you think it is. Um, and he also said, and we've heard this from, you know, a bunch of people online already, you never know what's going to hit. Some stuff just hits randomly. Um, so really like sharing genuine ideas and, you know, content you think is good. And that's a, that's a, about as good as you can do still at this point in time. Yeah, and you can uh, you could still make real relationships, right? You could still make Absolutely. close friends yeah. out of posting random shit on places where people consume content, which is so weird to me. But yeah, you, you make you make real friends. Um, yeah. So there you go, listeners. Uh, the algorithm will automatically filter out all of your terrible stuff that you make. So make it anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you never know what's going to pop off. So don't even try to plan. And thirdly, you might actually get some real friends out of it, though. So that's great. Um, That's going to be it for tonight. Folks, remember, behind every click, like, and share, there's a story, a person, and a passion. And a big shout out to all the creators and influencers out there making waves and building communities. I'm Ben Moyer. And I'm Mike Miller. Signing off on 104.5 The Link. 
stay linked, inspired. And until next time, keep creating. We're going to send you on your way with I'm Going Underground by Flux Vortex. And we'll see you on the next late night. Out here on the street, I'm losing my way. You've got into me, and that's my mistake. Some might say.